when you are having faith in god you are trusting god's faithfulness to get the work done but when you have the god kind of faith you are going to get the work done believing that god is backing you there are two different things so in the new testament faith god is not necessarily the one working you are actually the one working but god is the one energizing you in the old testament you are the one trusting god why god is the one working those are the two different things so one is called faith in god another is called the faith of god and so when you see mark 11 when jesus was teaching faith he never said anything that looked like trusting god there was nothing like trusting god in that whole scripture you address the issue and you don't doubt in your heart but one thing you know is that your father that is in you is already got get he has already got your back but in the old testament you trust god and stand aside and god begins to do the work that's how that's the difference and so this kind of faith is a faith that must be understood because no matter how you trust god now no matter how you believe in god now if you don't step out to do the work you will have no result did you not read when jesus cast out the deaf and dumb spirit he said the spirit threw the boy down jesus didn't speak again there are times when you may need to speak again but what i'm saying is you don't judge it based on the superficial when faith moves you know and i will show you jesus never spoke a second time when they looked at it jesus was not surprised and jesus began to teach them the principle that was where he said have the faith of the son of god the faith of the son of god is a different kind of faith entirely that's why i'm not perturbed i know it must happen if if it doesn't happen then i'll be surprised but when it happens it's normal that's the life he said, have the faith of the Son of God. And Jesus began to speak. And he said something. Verse 23. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say to this mountain. That's the key word. This mountain. He didn't say to a mountain. He didn't say to the mountain. He said what? This mountain. The problem most of us have is, we are talking every, every, every spirit that is in this body. Every spirit that doesn't want this business to work. Which of them are you talking to? When you want to operate faith, don't be in a rush to just speak. Take time, sit down. See, sometimes you need to consult with the Holy Spirit and make prayer of inquiry. What is the problem? Because if you don't know what you are addressing, the spirit will take you for a ride. All this, our everything, every that prayer, they don't produce results. Especially when you are still growing and your authority level is low. You will need specificity so that you can channel your energy. One wonder I learned as a young boy growing, science student of course, was the fact that we could use a converging lens to set a black leather on fire. You keep the lens under the sun, put the leather under or a black object. And the light will scatter as you are adjusting the lens you get to a, a focal point where the light from the sun will become sharp like needle and if it hits on that black leather after a while the leather starts burning so there is power to set a blaze but that power can't work until there's specificity this is the same thing that happens in faith when you are growing somebody tells you i'm not feeling fine don't just say in the name of jesus every sickness go no you will not grow like that ask the person is it a challenge with your head or with your eye or with your tummy you may not know the spirit exactly but at least try to address something is it pain is it a movement by the time you are able to specify to a very large extent you can converge the power of faith and create result too many times we are divergent in operation that's why it looks as if our faith is weak why am i teaching you this this understanding is what makes barren faith to become fruitful. Those things you are angry about and those things you are afraid of, they are not that powerful. It's your ignorance that makes them powerful. If you know what to do, casually you can begin to command results. I taught them this principle when I was running my, uh, the mentorship program online. A lady who had not worked for months just sat down following the lesson. And when we finished, I said, now let's put to work. 
And she just looked at her legs and said, In the name of Jesus, legs receive strength. In the name of Jesus, every chain on this leg stopping me from walking, I command you to be broken. And I decree the power to walk enters my leg now. And she stood up and started walking. Somebody who was sitting for six months, she didn't feel fire on her head. She didn't feel any special anointing. She just understood the principle. So you see two things that Abraham could look upon. He had the choice of looking at reality and he had the choice of looking at facts. The fact was that he was impotent and Sarah's womb was dead. But the reality was that there was a word spoken. So shall thy seed be. So instead of looking at his, his, his impotent nature or Sarah's deadness or his age or Sarah's age, he decided to look at the reality. The reality is that my seed shall be mighty. My seed shall be great. My seed shall fill the earth. It took God a lot to get him to that point. Because as powerful as God is, there was nothing God could do except as Abraham stopped considering the fact. Because what you see is what you will have. It's a law in the spirit. He said, as far as your eyes can see, is yours. If your eyes are only seeing the fact, even if the whole power in heaven is released, is the fact that will be produced. Because according to the law of the spirit, you only produce what you see. And so if you want to walk faith, you have to learn to see the reality and not the fact. Second Corinthians 4.18, Paul said, Why we look not at the things which are seen? He said, the things that are seen, they have a timeline. They are temporal. He said, but the things that are unseen, they are eternal. The things that are unseen, they are the reality. But how do you see the unseen? There is only one way to see the unseen. The only way to see the unseen is by seeing the world that created the unseen realm. Remember, the Bible said all things were created by what? By the world. And so when God sends his word in your direction, that word constitutes both the visible and the invincible realm. And so the simplest way to see reality is to look at the world. In John 12 verse 12, it says, Sanctify them with thy word. It says, For thy word is truth. Thy word is reality. And so how do I see reality? I see reality by seeing what God told me. I see reality by seeing what God said in the scripture. What God said in the scripture is superior to the circumstance. It's even superior to the vision. Hope you know that the devil can manipulate your faith. God told you that nations will hear you and the devil brings you a revelation that you are a poor man looking for help and if you are not careful to hold on to reality you will take that line vision and you will cause your reality to travel in that direction this is why i advise people make sure you know the word of god before you start latching on to visions even peter speaking he said we were eyewitnesses when he was transfigured on the mount they saw jesus transfigured but he said we have a more sure word of prophecy what is written is superior to the individual visions that you have as i'm here if I see a vision that corroborates what the Bible says, I receive it. But if I see any vision that does not align with what is written, I discard it. And that's how I've made my journey through life. Because many times, demons bring vision. Many times, your circumstances create visions. Many times, your experiences create vision. And so whether it's God showing you, whether it's the devil showing you, it must align with what the word says. Kenneth Hagin will see Jesus talking to him. And he will ask Jesus, this thing you are saying, where is it in the scripture? And Jesus will not be offended. Jesus will tell him, open 2 Corinthians 4, 9. Open Matthew 12, 24. That is Jesus. Because even Jesus knows that every vision submits to the word. People confuse themselves with visions. Your mother wants to kill you. Which mother? Your mother that carried you when you were vulnerable. Your mother that carried you when you, he, she could squeeze you. Pound you in a pot. She didn't kill you. It's now that you have become a millionaire. That the prophet tells you your mother wants to kill you. Won't you wake up? I know there are women who are wicked who kill their children. But I will not use what is generally spoken about in society to become my experience. It is safer to walk with the word of God. If you will carry the reality, which is the word, it will superimpose over time, over every other experience that you are having. Too many people trivialize the word and they find themselves going up and down, up and down. If you want to walk by faith, you must make reality prime and superior to facts even if i am dying now of cancer god forbid it will never happen but even if i'm dying now of cancer you will hear me tell you again and again that the spirit of god is in me he quickens my mortal body even if i were to be in pains i will tell you the spirit of god is in me he quickens my mortal body this is not an attempt to deny the fact but it is refusing the fact to dominate you that is what faith is
The Bible said in Galatians 5, 6, it said, faith walketh by love. And so we said this particular character is what energizes faith. Everywhere there is no love, faith will become weak. There are many persons who want to carry out great feats because of their ego. They want you to know that they too can raise the dead. They want you to know that they too have stature. They want you to know that God is with them. All of those things are vain. When you find a man who walks in the faith lane and walks there consistently, one thing that will dominate and predominate that man is love. And this is why many times you see Jesus walk wonders, especially in the area of healing, the Bible will say he was moved by compassion. And so the power that gets faith to produce result is articulated through the love component of faith. And so if you want to find the faith that is of God, that faith must be full of love. You can't walk in faith and be callous. You can't walk in faith and be envious. You can't walk in faith and be full of yourself. That's not the faith of God. Maybe something else is at work in you, but if it is God, you'll be dominated by love. Short. Every faith that stands the test of time, every faith that produces result consistently, underneath it is purity and a good conscience. In 1 Timothy 1, 19, it says, Holding faith and a good conscience, which some having put away concerning faith, he said they have shipwrecked their faith. In 1 Timothy 3, 19, he said, The mystery of faith is held in a pure conscience. In 1 Timothy 1, 5, Paul was speaking again and he said this is the end of the whole matter and he spoke about a love that is pure with a good conscience and faith unfeigned and so every time the faith of God is at work there must be purity there are many liars exaggerators manipulators who say they are faith people that is not faith you can produce or make things happen through manipulation especially when you are dealing with the affairs of life if you are in business you can use eloquence, you can use lies, you can use exaggeration, you can use manipulation to get things to work. We've seen a lot of fake people who became successful. And so if what you are doing is not rooted in purity, that's not faith. And so you don't only judge faith by manifestation, you check the spirit at work. And if it is of God, it must be pure. Even this work we do, a lot of ministers are liars. They come and exaggerate things, bloat things up to make you feel they are God and build a lot of momentum around themselves. People literally dread them. But when real life issues are brought on the scene, they are helpless. A man talks in a way that makes him look like a cherub among men. You look at him, you say, this man of God, this is a God among men. And this God among men, somebody will come with a simple problem and he can't handle it. So you just realize that a lot of momentum is built around many people through psychology. They use psychology, build momentum, get people to see them in a certain way. But God doesn't endorse it. If it is faith, there must be purity. Because the spirit of the last day is the spirit of deception. It's a manipulative spirit. And this is why many faith, many persons' faith have been seared with a hot iron. Because they've given to that manipulation. But if you want your faith to last, it must be with a pure conscience and a lot of purity in its operation. Who told you you can't take over a city? They tell you, ah, the last person who went to Adamawa, he ran back. That's his business. But as far as I know, he said Philip went to Samaria. He preached Christ there. And the city was full of joy. And the city was full of joy. Any city I enter is full of joy. Any nation I enter is full of joy. See, that's why even when you want to hear the stories of men, be careful what you hear and how you hear. Don't hear junks. Somebody was talking to me recently. He said the police, the mayor of Maryland, United States, the police discovered that consistently, every time Pastor E. Adeboe comes to town, crime rate goes down. And so what they did was, they gave him the key to the city. And when they discovered it, they started inviting him to Georgia too. Atlanta, Georgia. They gave him the key to Georgia. They gave him three keys to three states in America. <laughs> a black man, a Nigerian. Authority. He said he went to London the other time and preached somewhere. Or London or America. America, I think. And one of his friends who let him, you must come to my house. You must come to my house. So he went to his house and sat on the chair, ate and left. The man now sat on the chair, wrote some prayer points. And in three months, all the prayer points were answered. He now told his friend, that the boy came here, sat here. All the prayer points I wrote are answered. The friend said, really? In three months, the friend came, wrote his own and sat. And all the prayer points were answered. The, the thing now went viral. So people lined up in the man's house to sit on the chair to write prayer points. When he saw that the, the thing has become a challenge, 
He now decided to take the chair to his bedroom and bought an identical chair and kept there. In his mind, he said, if they now start praying and it doesn't happen, they will stop coming. The new chair he brought and put there started producing the same result. When he came back to Adeboye, Papa Adeboye now told him, well, maybe the anointing went into the ground. So anything that touches there will become a carrier of the anointing. And this man's house became a pilgrimage center because somebody sat there. Because somebody sat there. I heard a story that the hotel where he, him and his father in the Lord went to, before, that was the hotel where the father in the Lord told him, you will be the next general of Asia. I thought, mayoress or something hotel in America. And while they were in the hotel, the moment the man told him, you are the next general of Asia, they started praying. After some hours, some engineers came in and said, please, can we inspect this room just for a moment? What equipment are you people using here? And they checked everywhere. They said, you must be using a heavy machine here because the vibration coming from this room has affected the foundation of this building. <laughs> the vibration you are creating here has affected. They said, no, we are only praying. They said, no, you must be using a machine. They checked, they didn't find anything. They had to evacuate people from that hotel and lock the hotel for many years. He took Adeboye going back to the hotel to lay hands on the wall for the hotel to be reopened in six months. That is the fate of the fathers. Did you see what he told Joshua? In Joshua chapter 6 verse 2, he said, Behold, I have given you Jericho and his mighty men. Who Jericho? The Jericho that you don't even know how you will enter. The Jericho that the wall is taller than 10 men. How do you take it? Who knows about the mighty men? Nobody saw them. Because they've never fought them. You can't break the wall. But when they became the guy's mental picture, he slept and saw it. He woke up and saw it. He walked about and saw it. See, let what God tells you become your word. If God tells you that you will pack people in stadiums, if you need to draw pictures of stadiums and put in your room, draw it. Everywhere you turn, see it. Talk it. Anybody that cares to listen, tell him. Because if you have it, you won't keep quiet. You will see how many stadiums. A point will come when you will be in one stadium. Overflow will be in another stadium. That's why in the New Testament, you don't underrate anybody. Because you don't know what they are pregnant with. The person you are looking down on, maybe God told him he is the next patriarch of the body of Christ. But he has not entered it yet. You are underrating it. He is sweeping church. But he is actually going to become the lead apostle in the next 20 years. That you will travel to go and visit. Don't underrate anybody in this New Testament dispensation. So you don't know what God told them. The person you are looking down on today, who is in church, he comes to church and tells you, Sir, please, I need transport. You say, get out! He may be the one God said we build the cathedral. <laughs> he is still practicing something. But the cathedral, the church we enter, is in his belly. He's pregnant with it. He will build that cathedral. But now he's perfecting it. A point will come in two years, in three years. The same person will walk up to you and say, What's the budget for that building? You look at him and say, Ah, ah. <laughs> we're talking seriously. Join those who are going for so winning. Because we think there is poor people that go for so winning. He said, No, Pastor. Okay, wait, I brought you a gift. Really? You will come out and you see a Mercedes Maybach and a Cadillac. He said, Just use this and move around. I know uh, you trap. You will now say, Sir, come to the office. <laughs> I didn't see you well. How are you doing, sir? How is business? <laughs> You'll become overjoyed. <laughs> Don't underrate anybody. If the person knows this principle, he will shock you. The wealthiest people are not those who have money in their account. They are those who have caught the word for prosperity. The strongest people are not those who are working today or driving good cars. They are those who have caught the word of power. And so be certain that you catch something. When you catch that reality, it will dominate the fact. Many people are trying to practice faith, but they are living in the factual realm. They are living in the logic realm. They know too much biology. They know too much chemistry. And you don't blame them. You study chemistry for 12 years. You think it. You talk it. Why will it not dominate you? Some persons have done too much anatomy. And so when they see the bone break, they say, can't, 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 can't. Did the bone cut? From, what, what did the x-ray show? The bone cut. Ah! If the bone cut, it will take six months before you can stand on it. It will take one year before you can walk. It will take two and a half years before you can run. That's called anatomy. In the realm of faith, Jesus can say, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. If he say now, you can walk now. So don't let fact become reality. In as much as you will not deny fact, refuse fact from dominating you. This is a battle that will go on in your mind. 
but try to sit on this until it becomes your reality. How do you make the world your reality? By meditating on it and by praying it. By meditating on it and by praying it. When you go to the place of prayer sometimes, carry your diary. Carry your diary. Go to prayer with it and read it. When God, when you are reading, when you are praying, be reading it. Because sometimes you need to eat it. You need to plant it and you need to think it. There are certain verses of scripture those days that I will go to prayer. I will carry it. I'm praying for one hour and I'm reading it. I will read it and pray in tongues. I will memorize it. I will read it. I will pray in tongues until I didn't need to read it anymore. I will go to prayer. I will be reciting it. I will be reciting it until when I go to sleep. It will be playing in my head. It will be playing in my head. Now when I go out to do some things, I don't need to think. Those things have become my realities. Because God told me, I believed it. I ate it. I chewed it until it became my world. That's the faith of the Son of God. Are we following? Now, the faith of the Son of God, therefore, must be understood and must be practiced. If it is not understood and practiced, even though you have it, you will not manifest it. You know, spiritual things are so similar, identical, that it's difficult to explain. It's difficult to explain. It's so difficult. To explain in the New Testament, you can be in rebellion and still be walking wonders. <laughs> you know why? Because you have the ATM in the Old Testament, you don't have the ATM. You ask God, God authorizes it, and the credit is, is credited, the money is credited. But in the New Testament, you have the ATM, you can finish spending before you come back to God and say, Lord, sorry, I I bought some cars. <laughs> the Old Testament said, can't do that. You can't spend and come to tell God, sorry, I bought cars. God is the one who gives the alert. So even if you conclude your bargain, the money won't come. But in the New Testament, we have the faith of God. God trusts us that much and gave us that much authority. And so if you are not seeing manifestations or the expressions of faith, it's tied to two things. One, a lack of understanding. And number two, lack of practice. Practice because you have to master it because it's a life. My son started crawling. First, he started learning to sit, but his weight up was too much. So if he sits, he will fall down. His head will drag him down. After a while, his waist became strong. He started sitting. As he started sitting, he started struggling to put his two hands on the ground. But it looks as if the ground was too far. After a while, the hands started reaching the ground. But he couldn't sit up to crawl. He tried it for weeks, for months. After a while, he started crawling. Now he's walking. Today I saw him. He was no longer walking forward. He was also walking backward. <laughs> the next time, he will start running. You practice. That you stood up and fell does not mean you don't walk. It means you need more practice. That you prayed for the blind and it didn't open doesn't mean the power is not there. You need more practice. So as you are growing in understanding, you are practicing. It's the faith of the Son of God. You practice it, you grow understanding. You can walk any wonder in the New Testament. The New Testament is not a dispensation of superstars. Everybody is like Christ. If all of us have the same understanding and the same level of practice, all of us will manifest like Jesus. That's our DNA. It's a DNA thing. But the problem is, men don't practice and men don't pay the price for understanding and so tonight the whole subject of the prayer of faith is to show you a guideline that you need to consciously begin to practice and as you begin to practice it you will see yourself growing from one level to another and that's when you begin to enjoy life in the spirit sometimes you may have great power but because it's divergent your effect will be low. But if you understand this principle and you start being specific in your operation, you will notice that you start dealing with issues. Sometimes, even in crusade ground, where you see a lot of crowd, we make declaration. And you need to know something. While we are making that declaration, we are specifying cases. We may not call all the cases, but at least we specify the cases that the Holy Ghost puts in our heart or we can remember. Blind eyes, we command you, open. You will notice, we'll say, we bind the spirit of blindness and we command the blind eyes open. It's called specificity. First of all, you are dealing with the spirit. 
and then you are now addressing the eye spirit of blindness be bound come out eyes open spirit of deafness be bound ears open and then we are making those declarations making those declarations sometimes you don't have the results you are looking for you call the sick and you lay hands on them you are trying to be specific because the more specific you are the more impactful you will be and so in the corridor of faith you must speak to this mountain don't speak to every mountain don't speak to any mountain don't speak to the mountain speak to this mountain if you want to have results as you start growing a point will come when the anointing on your life will begin to flow like a river the presence of god you come with will be so intense that over and above your faith things will be happening but while you are yet growing master the principle somebody will need to sit down and carry his business and say in the name of jesus the forces fighting this business from being popular from being accepted i command those forces be bound i decree that this business is fruitful i decree that this business you are specific if you have a conviction if you have a belief system if you have a reality and you don't know how to present it there'll be problem because people need to interact with what you present some of you have lands here if they ask you do you have land and you say yes how are they going to believe you will bring the papers most of us here are graduates but if you come and say i'm a physicist the way you prove it is by presenting the certificate and so you are going to see in the presentation of this reality that emotion is not part of it many people think faith is emotion and so they start shouting they start screaming emotions don't work there many people think faith is gesticulation and so you find them they start doing all kinds of things you are youthful it's good to enjoy your youth but gesticulation is not faith what are the evidences you are presenting some of the evidences you present will be the encounters you have as you say them if they are true the moment you say them that realm will appear some of the evidences you produce are the scriptures not the ones you read yesterday the ones that you have believed when you appear you will say them the moment you say them if they are your reality there is a power that they will produce but there is the problem is if you have it as a reality and you never say it you won't see the power many people have realities bottled on their inside but they are struggling because they never presented them he said produce your cause he said bring forth your strong reasons the realm of the spirit is legalistic god knows that you have enough faith to raise the dead but no dead will rise until you command the dead to rise so you have to present that reality through the vehicles that god has provided either your words or your actions you lay hands or you do something if you don't do anything you have no result that's why i said faith without works is dead he didn't argue that there's no faith he said but there's no works and because there's no works he said that faith even though active is dead because what substantiates faith is the presentation the presentation it will take audacity it will take boldness it will take a lot of vehemence to be able to see faith produce result and so that is where the protocol insist that reality must be presented and that reality you present is the evidence sometimes you catch this evidence in the place of prayer you have read the scripture you have meditated on the scripture but there's a problem and you don't know what to do you now go to find the evidence that you need for this issue you know you are not afraid you know the result must come but you have not laid hold on it it's still far in your spirit you know that the answer is there but it's deep somebody is blind you have a word to speak for that eye to open but it's deep somebody came to you he's stranded you have something but it's deep and so many times the reality is not readily available you will go and excavate it so most times when we pray we are not praying because we are afraid we are actually searching and scanning because we know the reality is they want to draw it he said with joy you draw waters out of the wells of salvation all of this is the practice of faith so as far as we are concerned the mountain moved the moment you spoke so if the mountain has moved which mountain are you talking to again so your reputation is a sign that you didn't believe the mountain moved so you still believe the mountain is still there that's why you came back to talk to it because in the prayer of faith in mark 11 24 he said believe that you have it and you will have it you believe that you already have it for you to receive it 
you don't receive it to believe that you have it so by the time you address the mountain you already believe that the mountain is gone that's why the mountain left so if you come back to talk to the mountain then you never believe that the mountain moved because if you want to talk to that mountain again you have to go to the next location where you shift the mountain to but if you come back to where you are talking to the same mountain it shows that you didn't believe what you said and so the the necessity of this prayer is that you must not doubt and if you do not doubt you will pray it once and that's over so the prayer of jesus in gethsemane is not prayer of faith it's prayer of petition the prayer of elijah on on the mount of horeb is not prayer of faith it's prayer of petition because elijah was talking to god any time you start talking to god it's either prayer of intercession or prayer of petition if it is prayer of faith you never talk to god you talk to the mountain and jesus said the moment you have prayed you believe already that it is answered and if it is answered it means the mountain is no longer there that you came back to that mountain it means something was wrong with your believing it means you doubted what you have said and so you can't doubt when you are operating the prayer of faith now this is how doubt works faith is spiritual in romans 10 verse 10 the bible said with the heart man believes unto righteousness so faith is a heart thing not a brain thing but unfortunately you are spirit soul and body so the business your heart is carrying out your mind is also participating in it so when your heart is finished executing faith your mind comes back to ask questions do you just believe that that growth that took three months to develop will vanish like that your your mind is not it's, it's not trying to attack what you are doing it's just trying to convince itself i know that it took three months or four months for this growth to come up are you trying to say this talk that you're talking just said here now that growth left and don't you think you should check again that's the job of your mind if you didn't have a mind faith would have been automatic but when the spirit finish working the mind comes to ask questions that's where doubt emanates from esther said if i perish i perish i rather die believing god than to live without a conviction those things don't work it's witch doctors that make them happen and for some of us who have dealt with some of those issues some witch doctors have died before because when the rumor comes they start attacking people so that they can sustain the culture of men but for you who is having issues with stronghold and those strongholds are creating doubt making your faith of none effect there's a cure second corinthians chapter 10 from verse 3 to 5 he said though we war in the flesh we are not we walk in the flesh we do not war after the flesh he said the weapons of our warfare they are not carnal they are mighty through god to the pulling down of stronghold how is it casting down imagination can you put this on amplified for me this verse Hallyo, hallyo. Oh. you see what he said he said destroying sophisticated arguments and every exalted and proud thing that sets itself the true knowledge against the true knowledge of god and taking every thought and purpose to captive and to the obedience of christ how do you do it you cast them down you cast them down they tell you that ah if you don't do this this must happen you belong to this family you tell them no i am crucified with christ nevertheless i live the life that i now live in the flesh i live by the faith of the son of god i'm crucified with christ i know that i was born to this family but i died on the cross and so there's no legitimacy the way you deal with strongholds is to use scriptures to counter them see talk it to yourself sing it it's like psyching yourself but keep talking it until those things are no longer strong in your mind because if those things remain strong in your mind they will diffuse the power of faith because god walks through your mind and so it's like a roadblock you create in your mind that truncates the power that is in your spirit and so strongholds are doubt creators and they must be destroyed but the way you destroy them is by casting them down is by bringing them to captivity it's an argument so you need to bring a superior argument they say everybody who had cancer died you say no he was wounded for my transgressions he was bruised for my iniquities the chastisement of my peace was upon him by his tribes i was healed i am not healed yesterday i'm not healed today i'm not healed tomorrow i was healed two thousand years ago you argue it to yourself until that one takes preeminence they tell you that ah relax those people who come from benue preachers from benue they don't make it tell yourself no not me you said 
he was made poor that i might be made rich i have no business with poverty for when christ was made poor i was made rich he said i am in christ so the wealth of christ belongs to me he said all things are yours i don't have some things i have all things he said i'm a joint heir with christ those are my contemplations those are my cogitations i eat it i vomit it i eat it again i chew it i think it i pray it i talk it see if you tear me open those are the things you will find that's why we take steps that others are afraid of taking because we believe things they don't want to believe we talk those things until they become a reality and it's not the will of god for some of us to be there for all of us to grow into those realms that you can practice faith until when you talk it's like god has spoken a man may be down for 100 years for 40 years for 10 years you can look at him and say it's well with you and in less than 48 hours his story can turn around it will be so drastic that even him himself will be shocked that god can walk through a man in that order this is the calling we have been invited to and so when you understand this you begin to put to work and so why you pray the prayer of faith be specific don't box the wind address this mountain and when you are addressing this mountain don't let your attention go to the fact focus on the reality somebody can come to you his legs will be rotten but jesus said lay hands on the sick he didn't say lay hands on headache he said lay hands on the sick one may have headache another will have cancer of the face it doesn't matter he said what lay hands on the sick if you don't know how to face the reality and you look at the fact you will be bold to lay hands on the person who has headache but the one who has cancer of the eye you will be intimidated because you are seeing facts not reality and as you are praying you are praying you are praying they told you somebody is about to die and you are praying and suddenly while you are praying you break into laughter and you just laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh as though there's no challenge when you finish laughing call the person and say nothing will happen even if heaven falls down that person won't die because that laughter is your title deed god has proven to you that the answer has come it's called the note of victory sometimes there is an issue it looks as if you have come to the end of the road you know that this cannot be your end but the answer is far with human intelligence you can start talking many things but even you know that those words are english the word the word is here to come you now check your spirit you start meditating or you start worshiping you start praying after a while it gushes out of you and you begin to prophesy when you are done prophesying pack your load and go the problem is over you have answered the crisis that is your reality many persons don't know how to search out the reality or they don't know how to present it they just come and speak a lot of english language because somebody spoke a story and said he has a problem and he said this you carry what he said and said that is his reality not yours you have to find your own somebody comes and tells you an interesting story you clap hands every story you hear should inspire faith but it will not produce faith there are two different things the bible says faith comment by the hearing and by the hearing of the word of god so you need to understand the difference you may hear the story of Benson that was raising the dead it will inspire you to raise the dead but you must have to first of all meditate or catch a word that insists that you too will raise the dead and when you catch that word you have received your own key if you have not caught that word and you run with Benson in the house story you'll be shocked that's where many people get it wrong somebody may come and tell you i came into abuja i took over the city eight months you too you dress up with suit and come and say i will take over the city eight months you will be shocked there's something he heard there's something he saw there's something he meditated on that became his reality and so when he came into abuja he presented it like a report card i was told this thing on the mountain i've come to take over you now come you don't have a report card and you are coming to quote somebody the report card is with him where is your own you see where people get it wrong they don't catch it they are saying what others are saying i am mr god who studied chemistry he can show up and say i made four point in chemistry i'm a believer i made four point in chemistry me too i'll come and stand and say i'm a believer i made four point in chemistry they will clap for two of us when they finish they'll say where are the results he will now bring his own result they will now ask me i'll say ah are they asking for result didn't you know you think they will just respond to you because where is the reality you must have it and then when you have it you must what present it many don't have it but they are talking others have it but they are not talking the guy who will command result will first of all have it and then he was what he must what present it what is the reality you have 
on different aspects of life. That's how it works. You practice these things. You know, when I, I follow the fathers, I thought when you come, anything you like, say. It's when I started ministry, I discovered you don't say anything you like. Before these men talk, they cook. They do a lot of cooking. You will find somebody, he will sit on the Bible day and night, day and night. As he's reading, after three months, one word will come to him, one. And God will tell him, from today, everybody you lay your right hand on will be healed. That man will come to a meeting, he will talk stories, he will sing, he will play. When he finishes, he say, all of you who are sick, come. He will touch them, they will be healed. You will know that is his reality he's presenting. You too will now come and talk stories, pocket your hand and act like an elder. When you lay hands on them, you say, check, if you are healed, come out. Everybody will stand and be looking at you. You say, come on, come out if you are healed. Oh, okay, guys, it's not by encouraging people. Nobody. <laughs> and so what the faith man does is not to lament. I know we are 15 now, but we are talking to the globe. We are the biggest in Africa. We are the biggest. As you are talking, you are singing. Sometimes you come to church, you even write a song about the biggest church in Africa. And as they are singing it, the whole church is dancing. If a man who doesn't have understanding comes in, he will say, Kai, Christians are really fanatics. How can this church of 15 people be saying they are the biggest in Africa? You are practicing faith. Bishop Oedeko said, when he was in Kaduna, the wife came to visit from, is it Badon or Loring? Yes, from Loring. Yes, Quara is Loring. The wife came to visit. Meanwhile, she told the wife that they were doing great, that they were taking over the city. So the wife was excited. My God, my husband is already taking over the city. Let's go and see what God is doing in the north. How come God gave them so much speed? <laughs> she came to see speed. <laughs> when she came to church, God's servant was blasting everywhere, sweating and vibrating with megaphone. When he finished, he said, let's go home. The wife said, ah, have you started service? There were six of you now. I thought that was on the school. He said, ah, that was service. Is that the service that is taking the city? <laughs> but the man was seeing what God told him. The man was seeing it. And so he refused to see the six people. He refused to be limited by the six people. When he was ordained bishop, they were still not up to 50. Years. I saw one of his pictures in 1982, where he wore one huge cross. Those days he used to wear bishop cap. If you see the few people sitting in front of benches, when bishop came in with... You know, now when you when he comes in talking to 50,000 people, you say, Papa, Papa, because you are seeing his weight based on the crowd. When they were 10, he was like that. Because the, Jesus is what? The same yesterday, today, and forever. Your manifestation is the one who meets up the world. But before the manifestation came, the world already entered the reality. And so the way you walk faith is by standing on what God said. That's your reality. Every other thing is a line vision. It's a mirage. If you stand on the word, that thing that looks more real will not happen. I read the story of jo John Austin's wife. They told her she had eight days to leave. The husband was a mighty healing apostle, but the husband could do nothing. That's the father of Joel Austin. And when the woman saw that if she did nothing, this fact will become reality, she gathered 40 scriptures and started eating them every day. Started chewing them every day. A point came, those scriptures became her visions. A point came, those scriptures became her word. A point came, those scriptures became her reality. And eight days passed. Eight years passed. And the woman couldn't die. Until she grew and surpassed it, it became story. And it became testimony. That fact is not strong. You just allowed it to be like your reality. If you will hold on to the whisper that God gave you, or if you will hold on to what the word of God says, and you refuse that word must come to pass and so the second way to practice your faith is to make the word your reality because the word truly is reality and if you make that word your reality over time what the word says will become your physical word because the way it works is it is the invincible that becomes visible it's not the visible that becomes invincible and they say because you are neither hot nor cold they say i will spew you out of my mouth if a man begins to stagger god can't work with him he said Abraham was strong in faith, giving thanks to God. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 18, he said, give thanks always. This is the will of God concerning you. So the way to deal with the kind of doubt that arises through staggering 
is to do the will of God. Is to put yourself in the course of doing the will of God. Is it's like a, a exercising your spirit. A man who doubts because his faith, his spirit is weak. What he needs is to start exercising himself and starts growing. It's like a young man who is full of flesh, but he can't lift iron. He has enough flesh, but the flesh is what? Weak. So he's an obese. So much flesh, but obesity is a problem. And so what do you do to that kind of person? You don't need to cut off his flesh. Begin with him. Let him start 30 minutes road walk every day. As he's walking, after a while he starts running. As he's running, something will happen to him. It's called cardiovascular endurance. The volume of oxygen inhalation will increase. After a while, take him to the gym. Let him start raising 2 kg, to 5 kg, to 10 kg, to 50 kg, to 100 kg, to 200. A point will come, he will start lifting 5,000 kg. You know what will happen to that flesh? The flesh will start coupling. And a point will come, the flesh will shrink and the flesh will become tough. And so that big belly will become six pack. But you routed it through what? Exercise. When you start doing the will of God and exercising your spirit, you will notice something that your wavering, your staggering will stop. And you will start building capacity. And so how do you deal with that kind of doubt? If you sense that God wants you to be a son of consolation, to be a giver, go and start a small business. Be doing that business and be prophesying. If you sense that God wants you to heal the sick, start praying for people with headache. Pray for people with, with, who are itchy. Pray for people with death issues and keep praying. The testimonies you receive will start encouraging you. As those testimonies begin to encourage you, after a while they will start motivating you. You will want to see more. And as you begin to do more and start seeing more, you will start daring to do even much more. Whether it is cancer, whether it is pain, whether it is death, he say what? Lay hands. Your job is just to come in simple and obedient fashion. Lay hands and go away. He is the one who says to lay hands. And so as you are laying hands, you will see in your faithfulness, the results will be increasing. The results will be increasing. So get the problem, be specific. Face the reality and not the fact. Present your evidence, which is the word of God. And then don't doubt in your heart. Don't doubt in your heart. Don't doubt in your heart. And finally, pray. Anybody who operates in faith, pray. You can't claim that you are a faith man or you are operating in faith and you don't pray. The Bible said in Mark 11, 24, it said, whatsoever you desire when you pray. That means faith works when you pray. If you don't pray, faith will not work. Walk. In James chapter 5, verse 16 to 17, he said, is anyone sick among you? Let him go to the elders. He said, the prayer of faith. The prayer of faith. Because prayed, faith, what? Praise. Many people say they are people of faith, but they never pray. They come with dead letters, quoting it with very lofty English and have no results. If you want your faith to be alive, then your faith must be garnished with prayer. If you do these five things and do it progressively, you will see that you will not just walk in the corridor of faith, but your faith level will grow from one level to another level. I pray for you today that indeed you will walk by faith and not by sight. I pray for you today that as you practice the life of faith, you will grow in it and your manifestation will increase progressively in the name of the Lord Jesus.